Welcome to the show. I'm up here tonight in King Lake for one of their community dinners. These dinners began just after the fires to try and get everyone together to see how they could help each other. We're going to learn some great tips on our pavlova, something I find very hard, and sponges as well. And we're going to get a good look at how this community is coming together to help each other. So uh, come join me in their kitchen. So lid goes on, and voila, beautiful beef burger fit for a king. So come and join me in the kitchen. I'm here with Hags. Who Hi. Are you? How are you going? How come you got a box to stand on? Me? Oh, yeah. It just makes me look very powerful up tall here. Because I'm 5'11". So what are you going to make for us today? I'm going to make the beloved, mm, could be New Zealand or Australian, up to you. We'll go with Australian. Australian. Uh, pavlova. So no I, I love to make pavs. I'm a bit of a sugar freak. Well, it's something I'm not actually that confident with, so I'm very interested. Well, there's a few tricks, and they're very, very important tips. And if you don't follow them, no go. So what are we going to need to make it? Right. First of all, we're going to need oigs. OK, get cracking eggs. Now, oh, I'm involved in this, am I? Well, or? I think we should. Actually, we I might need can't another reach. bowl. Yeah, we need another bowl. So, what we're going to do is make sure that we don't get any yolk. A, a skerrick of yolk, no good. And you will probably have um, some accidents, you know. I have washed my hands. It says <laughs> ensure a clean and healthy kitchen. And I it's have very washed important. my hands. Very important. So, we're going, to, we're going to make sure that we don't get any yolk whatsoever. So, when I get about to, say, three, I then tip it into the main bowl that I'm going to beat it in. But I will never put it in the same okay. bowl. Because if you get an egg yolk, a bit of egg yolk in, you've got to start again. That's how I separate. I always you? get in trouble for it. No. They won't let me do it on camera like that, but maybe after today I'll get away with it. Listen, listen, you tell them it's the right way. It's the easiest way, you isn't tell it? Them. It's the best way, actually. So I'm yeah. going straight in here, so with any, yeah. hope I don't wreck it for you. You get a yolk in there, then you're rinsing that whole bowl out. <laughs> How many are we doing here, sorry? Oh, look, normally I would put a dozen, but these are little eggs. So I'm going to put Beautiful 14. eggs, eh? So, All right, so we've got our egg whites separated now. No yolk, no oil, no nothing. That's right. Okay, so they're quite, they're quite viscous, aren't they? Viscous is a good word. A lot of viscosity. Viscosity. <laughs> now, don't go flat out at first. You need to break this up. Okay. So you just do it really low until you know that, and obviously you know the object is to get as much air in there as you want. So you. You break it up first. Do you reckon they can see that little bit of shell in there as well, or just us? No, no it's a special surprise at the end. <laughs> it is. It's a special surprise. So you're just sort of breaking them all up so they're not individual? Well, it, it, it's, it's important to get them a little bit aerated first. That's how you get a great volume in the pan. So you just do that for a little bit. Once you see that's foamy, foamy, Go for it, Barry. Yeah. And what I like to do is get as much air so I continue to do the bowl. Okay. I'll just continue to give it a twirl. <laughs> Let's give it a twirl. But what are we looking for here now? Because this is what people want to know. All right, what we're looking for now is to get it slight, slightly peaky, but not very soft. Soft peaks. Yeah, then we can start adding the cast of sugar. Now what I've done is the six egg whites would be one and a half cups, roughly, of cast of sugar. Overload it and you're going to get a lot of that weepiness coming out. You know okay. some have to got that toffee weepiness. Yeah, yeah. Well, you find that a few days later, right, even this, on good ones. See that? About this. See, it's, 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 it's forming. Okay. It's forming. But not quite holding. But it's not holding. This is when we would start to... All right, so... Now we do a third at a time. Okay. Straight in there? Yep. And this is caster sugar? Caster sugar, a third of it. Yep. All right, I'll call that a third. Very good. Yeah. How do you know when to get the next third in? Different finger. <laughs> good. No, I can see that's very smooth. Very <laughs> smooth. No grit. You can't have grit. All right, so okay. it just needs to dissolve. Yeah, towards the end. Now, the egg, the caster sugar will get this glossy about yep. at this stage. Um, I just keep it moving, grab everything off the side. All right. Try that, you try that. All right, I'm a bit nervous here. 
<laughs> right. Is it pretty still? It's no, no, smooth. Very yeah, smooth. You need it. Yeah, you need it. And it's getting a beautiful shine on there. This is what it's meant to look like. Yeah. They wouldn't know it was a pack of mix, would they? Yeah. And really, a good 10 minutes, I would beat it for 10 minutes. It's a, a long time, I know, but it's just about right. You want it? All in. So 10 minutes from when we start doing it, or. Or yes. 10 minutes once you start adding the sugar or? No, 10 minutes from when you start doing it, but you've still got to uh, not be a, a rigid on that. You've got to just make sure that the grittiness is just not there. Just play it by ear. Mm. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon she's done. I'm going to put a couple of <laughs> teaspoons of, of vanilla extract because vanilla extract is nice and syrupy. And it's a genuine product, isn't yes, it? It's, it's not synthetic. Yeah, so I'm going to put, oh, look. And if you, if, I just, if our, um, I just do this. Bea. Geez, that's a bit though. Was that a slip, or are we supposed to put in? No, that much? I, I love it. Okay. <laughs> Look, we don't forget we've done double mixture. Yep. See, so that's a double mixture. Double and a half. That's right. It's a double and a bit, and then I'm going to put in something very special. And this is King Lake. Look. King Lake King raspberry Lake vinegar. Raspberry vinegar, and this is from the raspberry farm. And look, oh, look, I'm going to guess. Just go for it. You know. And it we might have a taste though. Can I use your spoon? Mm-hmm. Oh no. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that's a bit much. Don't do that much. But for this it's amount, nice though, it won't it? be bad. Now, the vinegar. Put this through the dishwasher. You know when you poach an egg, you put vinegar in. Yeah. It seems to bring the white together. The shape, yeah. You know. Well, it helps the egg white set at a lower temperature. Yes, which it means does set at a lower that's temperature. That's what vinegar does. And so. vinegar does that. Now I'm going to get that off my fingers. Which, if you want a nice white pav, mm. that's very important. That but now low that's not much corn flour. This is corn flour in there, but it's about the right amount that I want. What are you calling that? Two tablespoons? I don't even think it's that. Do you? I think it's a tablespoon. For this amount, I'm going to do a tablespoon. For and a double and a half mix. Yeah, and I'm going to do, but but I like to sift it a bit over the top. Now and then I'm going to put a pinch of cream of tartar in there because oh, it's quite tart. Pinch in a bit, <laughs> right? And fold that through. And so see how it's forming little crusty bits? Yeah, is that good? Yeah, that's to give you the crust on the outside. And the cream of tartar will give you that particular pav flavour. Oh, look, I have made mistakes before and I've gone, oh, yeah, chucked it in, gone and answered the phone, chucked more cream of tartar in because I forgot. <laughs> now, here's the secret, and this is my sister's secret. Boiling water. It's just been boiled. It's got to be very boiling. Freshly boiled. Yes, yeah, got to be freshly boiled. And I, in about that amount, amount, normally I'd say two tablespoons of boiling water after you've finished doing that. It's going to start cooking it. Okay. Mm. Is that the idea? Is that why you do it, or? Yes, and you get a marshmallowy middle, more yeah. of a marshmallowy middle. And because um, it gets a head start, is that why? Normally, for the six egg pav, you would put say two tablespoons of boiling water and I just it starts to cook it so I'm going to do this in two halves okay so I've roughly got four and it starts to actually cook and it and as you know you've already got corn flour in there and what happens to corn flour and boiling water it, it thickens it has thickens right this is a, this is a different way of doing it definitely are you giving the people at home a look at that sheen on there oh look at that very impressive isn't that heaven look heaven I love it tastes good Except I'm a bit of a sugar addict. So I'm going to bore you with a bit of conversation here, though. Go on. How do you think these community dinners uh, help out the community? Oh, look, the main thing about them is getting the community together. So many people, particularly ones that live in the uh, Temp Village. And how many is that? Sorry. Oh uh, well, the, some of them are gradually getting into their homes. I can't give the exact figures. Yeah, but. But still plenty of people in them or? There's still plenty of people in them. Do you mind, because I can't actually do this and talk at the same time, so I'm going to have to just kind of tell you. The people who lost their homes, uh, a lot of them still aren't in their, in, in their new house because of their, all the new building regulations came in for the bushfire attack level. They call that the bell waiting. And that was after it, obviously. Yes, and um, it's, it's, let's say you had your house insured for $200,000, just the building, right, to rebuild it. Okay, well, suddenly it cost you 300000 because of the new bell rating. Um, the bushfire attack level, they have to have specialty items and fire blankets and special 
insulations and that kind of thing. I'm going to pile this up, all yeah, right? Yeah, go for I'm it. I'm going to pile it high in the middle. You know, look, you've got to consider too that a lot of these people are 65 years old, they've retired. Yeah. Who's going to give them a loan for an extra 100000 They're on a pension. And so, but that's what I mean. So where does that leaves them here, obviously, still in the There's temporary still housing? With yes, and there's so many that can't build on their blocks. Now, when they say we will rebuild.com, they should have said we will rebuild depending on this, that and the other thing.com.au <laughs> because it's not as simple as that. So I'm going to pile this up high because this will, this will spread. Um, now, the way to hold your sides together is to get a knife, and I haven't got one handy. But you got this, your magic spatula though. Got me magic spatula. Look at it, it's a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> I busted it. You really are doing it tough, Probably aren't you? Probably in a temper. <laughs> no, well I, look, I saved our house. I didn't do it single-handedly. The fact is that we had six people there, six adults. Yep. My daughter, son-in-law, and my husband and myself and the grandkids, so we, it did catch on a couple of times. We lost everything out, so I, I, I can't, couldn't claim my spatula and all the outside no. insurance. <laughs> I always Please. thought when you made these, you had to put them in like a container with sugar around the outside to get them crispy. Maybe, maybe you do. Well, I hope not, because this is looking a lot easier and a lot better. Well, I don't know. Will this crisp up on the outside? Yeah. Oh, well, it's all but good. But that all depends on, if you put it in the oven at a low temperature, leave it in there for an hour, and then you turn your oven off, let some air in, and let it cool down in the oven. That's let the oven tip. Let it get cold in the oven. Then you get the crunch. So I'll just pop this in the oven, because yes. I've got to go over and uh, see Dot about her sponges. Yes, oh, and do you know, she is known as the dessert queen. All right, she wear a crown? Well, she should wear a crown. She's the dessert queen, and I'm Princess Pudding. I'm her understudy. So maybe you could uh, get the throne one day. Oh, if I'm lucky, I we'll, might get We'll the see throne. how good your pavlova is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dot, I hear your sponges of a talk of the town. Do you do different fillings? We're making a raspberry oh, yes. cream here. Oh, yes. I think we're making a raspberry cream. Yes. But uh, do you do different ones? Yes. And what's the most popular? Passion fruit cream. Okay. And do you put uh, other things on top of them, or that's no, just pretty simple? I slice it. That particular sponge, I make a three, three tier, and it has uh, two layers of cream and passion fruit icing on the top. Oh, icing on top? Mmm. Nice. Everybody nice and likes it. Yeah, you can't Fresh go past the icing. Fruit. So you're just slicing that in half by the look of it? Oh, yes. And, and I'm going to. Uh, Organise half this cream to be plain. Mm -hmm. So raspberries are in. Do you want me to give this a good, good yeah. whip through? You want them broken mm. up? Mm. They love this particular one. Yeah, this is a favourite of theirs. Oh yes. So there's your raspberry cream. I'll give you a spatula back. <laughs> so what keeps bringing you here week after week? Well, I like cooking and. Um, at the moment, they seem to like sponges. I'm sure you'd get a few yeah. few phone calls if you didn't if, if the sponges weren't there. Probably. <laughs> they might not be as concerned for your safety as they are for their uh, <laughs> for their dessert. Yes, <laughs> I agree there. <laughs> All right. So now you've just got dark chocolate. You were telling me earlier there's something good about dark chocolate. Yeah, it's good for diabetics. Better for <laughs> diabetics or good for diabetics? Um, diabetics can eat it. How long have you lived up in King Lake? I've been up here about seven years now. Yep. Yeah. Well, thanks, Dot, for showing us how to put up a beautiful sponge. I'm sure it's going to be a big hit later on, but we've still got a roast to cook. So join us after the break, and I'm going to give you a few more little tips. I've got a little tip for you about my pumpkin. I'm sure you don't need it, but...